All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. And I'm working on my uh, Ultimate Fedora desktop installation. And as many of you know, I have a four terabyte HDD installed on the system. And unfortunately, um, the four terabyte NTFS partition cannot be seen in Fedora 23. So I have verified that the drive works perfectly fine in Windows, but I cannot see it in Fedora 23. Um, for those of you who are more advanced, uh, Parted does show the partition and it shows it as an LDM partition, so it thinks it's part of a RAID, which it's not, of course. Uh, so it doesn't look like there was support uh, compiled into the kernel, and I have compiled kernels before, but I'd rather not go through all that. So what I'm going to do uh, as a test is I'm going to create a live image, and there's a release known as Rawhide. Basically what it is, um, as they are working on developing the newest version of Fedora, which is 24, they nightly compile the images, so the live CD, uh, the live iOS image, <clears throat> um, the net install image, and the server image and I can download the workstation version of that image which in order to do that um, rawhide releases are only released on fedora or excuse me only released on mirrors so what I had to do was find a mirror and it really wasn't too difficult basically what I did was do a search for fedora mirrors and then I found one that was close to me um, this one's Virginia Tech, so it's relatively close. Um, and I've already downloaded this image from Virginia Tech. So now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is go ahead and do the uh, USB creation. So I'll use the USB creator tool. I'm going to pick a custom... OS. I have to select the OS and I'm going to see if I can expand this. So the one that I want, <clears throat> I have a couple of them here. I, I have uh, the Fedora Live workstation and then I have the Rawhide version and I actually want the Rawhide version. So I'm going to select the Rawhide version Sorry about that. My wife was leaving and I had to wave to her. And I'm going to select... Okay, so I've selected the ISO. And I'm going to create the live USB. It says there's no portable drives connected. Well, there should be. Let's find out. Yeah, I have it right here. Definitely connected. Honestly, I learn something different every day. So I've formatted this as a DOS fat partition just to use for copying files back and forth, but that is definitely a 32 gigabyte portable um, USB. So let's see. I don't know why it doesn't think there's any portables. That's really unusual. Well, let's do this, just for kicks and giggles. I'm going to unmount this. Pull out the SanDisk UltraFit. And mount it again. Go back to Fedora. Alright, so it doesn't have any, so I'll reselect it. Say Open. Create Live USB. So, for whatever reason, it doesn't see that thumb drive. So, I've just got to find another one. I have a suspicion it's because it's a um, fat OS, which the reason I do fat OS is because then I can use it with any of my systems, which is nice. So, I can put it in Windows, I can put it in Linux and I can transfer files back and forth. 
but I've got plenty of thumb drives, so let's put a different one in. All right. Okay, so we've got another one in there. Um, this one was my CentOS test, so I'm not concerned at all about overwriting it. So I'm going to do write to disk, and while it does write to disk, I'm going to explain, if I haven't already, why I'm using the Rawhide. So the Rawhide has the latest files, the latest kernels that are being tested, the latest everything. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I'm going to have all the latest images, all the latest kernels, <clears throat> everything is up to date as it can be. On the other side of the coin, uh, that will include all the bugs that come with it and all the testing that they're doing right now. But the whole point here is to determine if the Fedora 24 latest edition with all the updates and all the changes they've made is going to support that 4 terabyte NTFS partition. Linux supports 4 terabytes, um, but it's obviously having problems with a 4 terabyte partition. So my goal here is to determine whether or not Fedora 24 can do that. And I'll do that by booting, like I did in my previous videos, to a live uh, USB, if you will, of Linux. So once the write's done, <clears throat> I'll pop this in my other computer and we're gonna boot it up and find out if we can see that partition. Uh, keeping my fingers crossed, hoping that it's going to work. If it does, I think I would consider going ahead and upgrading to the Fedora beta right now um, because once the beta period is completed, it, it becomes Fedora 24. So um, I can simply use the um, DNF program command line program to do an update and I'm instantly Fedora so not a big deal instantly Fedora 24 if it doesn't work I think I'm gonna try maybe an Ubuntu spin and see if their kernel has been properly compiled to support 4 terabyte NTFS partitions we shall see alright so it's all ready I'm gonna go ahead and take out the drive So I can see it's now it is mounted. I just mounted it. So I'm going to unmount it. And I'm ready to pull the drive out. And I'm going to head over to the other computer. And we're going to see what happens. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do uh, use my camera here to do a screen capture. Uh, because I am going to be rebooting. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, a restart and do a reboot and the F9 key will get me into um, the bootable mode it's scanning my devices all that exciting stuff okay so I have my USB thumb drive in there uh, I know it's this one so here it is so we're gonna start that Fedora Live Rawhide I do not need to test the media and I do apologize for the terrible glare. I know it's a big pain. Hopefully that error message is not going to cause it not to boot. It's probably a debug kernel, which means it's going to display all the error messages. This is what the startup of Linux used to look like in the bad old days. Before they put the pretty GUI over it. So basically our goal here is to just confirm that that drive is either available or not. It will be a pretty simple test. Uh, if you open the file manager it either shows up or it doesn't. So I'm just going to do try Fedora because I don't want to install it to the hard drive right now.
Okay, well, here is the file manager that I need to go into. And you'll know if things are working correctly. Whoops, don't need to do that. If you go to other locations, um, in here, I should be seeing my four terabyte drive. And it definitely did not mount it. So looking at the drives here, uh, SDB1 <clears throat> is my official Linux, well, SDB as in Baker is my official Linux drive. SDA is my Windows drive. And looking at all of these volumes, I do not see one showing up. Now if I go into activities and we'll bring up the terminal uh, hopefully the tools are installed I'll show you that the drive is there so I'm gonna become root and I'm gonna go into a program called parted <clears throat> and we're gonna use the command print and it shows us the current drive we don't want to use that one so I'm going to use help. As, as soon as I learn these commands for parted, I forget them. So let's do print devices. Okay, so you can see there deb sdc 4001 gigabytes. Um, that right there, that's the drive. And technically speaking, I should be able to uh, access that drive, but I can't. So DevSDA is my first SSD with Windows, my second SSD with Linux, and SDC, of course, is that 4 terabyte drive. Um, <clears throat> let me do help again. And I forget how to change to the actual drive. I, I wanted to show you it. There we go. Select uh, dev s. DC. Okay, so now if I do a print, <clears throat> here's that third partition that, for whatever reason, um, it thinks is an LDM data partition, but in reality, it is an NTFS partition. So Linux really doesn't handle, well, I mean, I shouldn't say all Linux, Fedora anyway, uh, has a problem handling, it appears to be um, any NTFS partitions greater than two terabytes. So why use NTFS? Well, I have a dual boot machine here, so I want to be able to access it from both systems. So if I can't figure out a workaround to get this partition mounted, um, basically what I'm stuck with is uh, probably taking the drive and I would have to back up the data, which is difficult because it's uh, the, the only other drive I have available for backup is a two terabyte, and I know I have more than two terabytes on this drive already. Um, I would have to back it up and then create two two terabyte NTFS partitions so that Linux could see it. <clears throat> All this rigmarole with partitioning reminds me of the two gigabyte partition limit in Windows XP and numerous other similar partition issues um, with other uh, versions of Windows through the ages you know you would go and get a 512 megabyte drive for Windows 95 or whatever and it wouldn't be able to see it so you'd have to figure out how to fix that and it went on and on and on so um, this is really nothing new um, hopefully Linux will grow and usually hardware support of this nature gets added at some point. 
I could just reformat this as ext3 and it would work perfectly fine, but then Windows wouldn't be able to see it. So, kind of got a catch-22 there. But, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If I come up with any updates, um, I'll let you know. And I think in a future video, I'll be testing um, Ubuntu as well to see if that kernel works. Thanks again.